The Count and the Wedding Guest Andy Donovan had his dinner each evening in the house on 2nd Avenue, where he lived in a furnished room. One evening at dinner he met a new guest, a young lady, Miss Conway. Miss Conway was small and quiet. She was wearing a plain brown dress. She seemed interested in very little, except her dinner. And her dinner did not interest her very much. She looked up at Mr. Donovan and spoke his name, and then began to eat again. Mr. Donovan had a smile that everyone liked. He smiled at her and then thought no more about her. Two weeks later, Andy was sitting outside the house, enjoying the cool evening. He heard a movement behind him. He turned his head and, and could not turn it back again. Coming out of the door was Miss Conway. She was wearing a night black dress of soft, thin cloth. Her hat was black. She was putting black gloves on her hand. There was no white and no color anywhere about her. All black. Someone in her family had died. Mr. Donovan was certain about that. Her rich golden hair lay soft and thick at the back of her neck. Her face was not really pretty, but her large gray eyes made it almost beautiful. She looked up into the sky with an expression of sadness. All black, readers. Think of her. All black. And that golden hair. And looking sadly far away. Mr. Donovan suddenly decided to think about Miss Conway. He stood up. It's a fine, clear evening, Miss Conway, he said. It is to them with the heart to enjoy it, Mr. Donovan, said Miss Conway. She took a deep, slow breath. I hope no one, no one of your family has died. Death has taken, said Miss Conway, not one of my family, but one who... I must not speak of my troubles to you, Mr. Donovan. Why not, Miss Conway? Perhaps I could understand. Miss Conway smiled a little, and oh, her face was sadder than when she was not smiling. Laugh, and the world laughs with you, she said. But the world is not interested in sadness. I've learned that, Mr. Donovan. I have no friends in this city, but you have been kind to me. Thank you for it. He had done nothing except offer her the salt at dinner. It's not easy to be alone in New York, said Mr. Donovan. But when New York is friendly, it's very friendly. Shall we take a little walk in the park? It might be good for you. Thanks, Mr. Donovan. I would enjoy it. But I don't want my sadness to make you sad. They went through the open gates of the park and found a quiet seat. We were going to be married soon, said Miss Conway. He was a real count. He had land and a big house in Italy. Count Fernando Mazzini was his name. My father didn't want me to marry him. Once we ran away to get married and my father followed and took me home. I was afraid they were going to fight. But then my father agreed. Fernando went to Italy to make everything ready for me. My father's very proud. Fernando wanted to give me several thousand dollars for new clothes, and my father said no. When Fernando went away, I came to the city. I work in a shop. Three days ago I had a letter from Italy. It said that Fernando had been killed. That's why I'm wearing black. My heart has died, Mr. Donovan, with Fernando. I cannot take interest in anyone. I should not keep you from your friends who can smile and enjoy things with you. Shall we walk back to the house? Now, readers, if a girl tells a man her heart has died, he wants to make it live again. I'm very sorry, said Mr. Donovan. No, we won't walk back to the house yet. And don't say you have no friends in this city, Miss Conway. I'm your friend, and I want you to believe that. 
I have his picture here, said Miss Conway. I wear it on a chain around my neck. I never showed it to anyone, but I will show it to you, Mr. Donovan. I believe you to be a true friend. Mr. Donovan looked for a long time with much interest at the picture. The face of Count Mazzini commanded interest. It was wise, bright, the face of a strong, happy man who could be a leader of other men. I have a larger picture in my room, said Miss Conway. When we return, I will show you that. I have nothing more to help me remember Fernando, but he will always live in my heart. I'm sure of that. <laughs>